Should you buy the Samsung Q60B? That's what we're going to be talking about today, and in under 30 seconds, I'll tell you yes. It's a good TV. I recommend you buy it. Now, smack a like on this video for not wasting your time being respectful and, again, just getting to the darn point, spitting it out already. Too many videos waste my time when I'm, like, looking for something outside of my niche, and I can't stand that kind of thing. So if you can't either, smack a like, and let's talk about why I say it's a good TV. Now, it is an edgelet television, but that's not a problem in the context of what they offer. So if you don't know the whole full array, local dimming, edge lit, all these jargon terms, you don't have to, right? The point is the black levels have a decent enough native contrast to where the black levels aren't going to be ultra gray. And at least that's my experience on my unit. I have the 55 inch variation of this panel. Now, the thing that I noticed that I saw that I didn't like is that when you have color on the screen, color is really weak. Um, it's hard pressed to call this a quantum dot television in my personal opinion. I think you probably could do a lot better. Um, the intensity is just not there in the color, no matter how hard you try. And it's even worse when you switch into HDR. So for that, you're going to want to invest a little bit more money. Now, in terms of gaming, the gaming features are there. You have, you know, motion processing in game mode. Input lag is nice, low, and responsive, so you won't have any issues there. Now, unfortunately, if you're somebody looking for 120 hertz gaming, again, you're going to have to spend a little extra money, especially if you're looking for Adobe Vision. Samsung has no Adobe Vision. We kind of already know those things going into it, and if you don't, there they are. Now, that being said, this is their budget performer, so you aren't going to get the normal versions of the processor, so you have the light version of their 4K quantum processor and their sound, uh, their object tracking sound feature. You're going to have the light version of both of those technologies. However, upscaling I found to be wonderful. I was watching Crunchyroll, and I really was immersed in the content, and that's honestly the ultimate test. Can I be engaged in the content? And the answer was unequivocally yes. Then when we look at things like audio, I was actually impressed because I'm going into this expecting a budget TV because when you unbox it, it's this super thin TV. Now, while we're talking about real quick, just to go, kind of go off on a tangent here, while we're talking about the thinness of the TV, I like that when you take it out of the box, you don't have to use any screwdrivers or anything like that. The legs just slide right on and you're done, just like we saw last year. So that's great. They brought that back over. But the profile is like one inch thick and, and it's, it's really thin. It's like ridiculous. I don't even... I mean, I, it'd be hard pressed to even say it's an inch. It, like, it's really thin. It's like, it's like this. It's super thin. The the TV with like no bezels, which is great at this price point. So when you talk about that, audio obviously becomes a concern. Like, you're clearly not going to have a subwoofer in there, so you can forget that. But how is the rest of the audio experience? And I actually was impressed by the clarity of vocals, particularly in all the shows and everything that I was watching. And to the point where I was like, wow, like, it's really clear. Like, I hear everything. It was really a nice experience. Um, as far as bass, don't expect bass. It's not going to be there. So if you're looking for a room-filling bass, it's not going to be there. But it doesn't sound like a tin can either. And that's huge on something that thin, which goes, like, over the head of some other reviewers talking about this television. Now, when we talk about the overall cost-to-value ratio, I guess the, com the competition, what your options are, and things like that, I will be very honest with you, this uh, TCL S546 currently right now as I'm shooting this in like, you know, June of 2022, that's a better option in my personal opinion. It just gives you more features and it gives you much better picture quality with quantum dots that can actually pass for quantum dots. This TV though doesn't really do that and I feel like that's where the kind of Mm, you kind of are a little bit behind the times, if I'm being honest with you, in terms of Samsung's delivery and picture quality. However, all the things that they do provide and do a good job at, they definitely do a good job at. HDR is not one of them. Black levels are good, but you're not going to have local dimming features or OLED features, but it's good enough. And on the subject of black levels, it can actually get pretty inky from time to time. And I actually, again, I, I really am surprised at how this TV performs after calibration. Now, a special note if you are hiring a professional to calibrate your television um, or you're trying to do it yourself there is no ex link on this television so auto cal is out of the question it's just not happening on this set so that's something that's important to you you have that answer it's not there you will have to sit there manual to calibrate and all that good stuff i can say though you know before calibration it looks bad like overly blue just a mess not at all a good looking picture pretty hazy it, after calibration though it does look pretty decent and it can pass for mid-range TV. So again, that's what helps this TV propel itself just a little bit further. If you put the work in, you are rewarded to some degree, but not a whole lot. It doesn't have a whole lot of latent potential. Just it, it's, it's a good TV. You know, in terms of tier, there's good, there's great. Of course, there's S tier. And then, of course, bottom of the barrel at the bottom that nobody would buy or should buy. 
So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's a good TV. I know I'm kind of saying that a lot here, but ultimately, if you find this video and maybe it's a holiday or whatever, and you have questions for me, reach back out. I'm more than willing to help however I can. I try to help everybody in the comment section that I can with any, anything you think might even be a silly question. If you're new to this topic or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just come on out, ask questions, and I'll help you however I can. I hold live streams Friday, 7 p.m. through 8 p.m. usually Eastern Standard Time, so you can find me there. But that being said, uh, yeah, I, I recommend it. I think it's a good TV, but there will be better options. This is the TV I recommend for somebody who you want a thin TV, but you also want a name brand TV. I think this will probably be one of the better routes you go. I think the frame possibly could be better, but I'd have to review it to check it out. But that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.